what I what I did in my um, in a project in Poland, we built up a village project on um, uh, on the basic of agriculture. And the starting point of the of the farm was a pH of four, so that is all completely dead soil <laughs> or industrial agriculture. And um, of course, when the pH of your soil is the, um, is done, that is like in the human body, um, the whole biological processes and so on cannot uh, cannot work out. So the first thing we did is to make the chemical side of the soil into the nature side so we starting up to bringing kalk with magnets into the soil to to get a higher pH the next step we did is that we um, that we uh, bring in air into the soil to to how to say to break the soil open after after because after the industrial agriculture the whole soil was completely um, um, disturbed and um, uh, how do you say uh, pressed down and then the, the last step we did is that we start with um, um, composting so and now you see in that little picture here you see we have there we have a dairy farm and we have about uh, um, 2,000 hectare of arable land and uh, no landscape landscape air, um, uh, elements anymore so all the hedges and all the, the water places was dried out or disturbed by the Russian people after the Second World War. So we have a really problematic starting point with below 1% humus content. And we start also, with, like I said, with the chemical side of the soil, then we start with the physical side of the soil, and then we start with composting. But we, 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 that is the normal way to do it, but we, 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 we see that it doesn't work out because there was no microclimate, there was no water in the landscape, and the hedges was dried out that we planted. So um, I have a visit of a, quite a, a good friend of me, and he sent me a book uh, about water landscaping, and then we start to... Um, to buffer to make buffering water in the landscape, so all the tails, uh, about forty hectares, we uh, start to work out uh, a system. How to keep the water what we have in the rainfall in the winter time, six hundred millimeter a year, um, to keep it into the landscape, to get some moisture into the landscape, and to get some cooling in the landscape because it's also a, a climate with forty five. Uh, degrees uh, high temperature in the summertime and maybe about 30 degrees minus in the winter time. So very extreme climate and only water falling in the in the winter time. So um, that was the starting point. And after a while we feel we see that the clover starts growing because at the beginning we have sandstorm, we have no possibility to 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 grow uh, at least our crops we want in our nice, beautiful crop rotation we thought about. Um, and so we find out that when we give 20% back to the nature in, in form of hedges and lakes and pines and, um, and natural places, we will maybe harvest about, on the 80% we still is left, we harvest more as now. Because the starting point of the harvesting was about six, 700 kilogram of grain a hectare. In the end of the, uh, after 10 years, we harvest about five tons a hectare. So it was quite a successful story also from the side of the economical part of the farm. Um, what we do when we building water landscaping, then you have, of course, you have this, the visible lake you see in the landscape. So it looks quite good. It looks like, like uh, you did something for nature, but the water is also going be under the fields. So in that picture you see here, here on that field where that tractor is driving, we need to harvest anything before we making here a lake of nine hectares. And then lake of nine hectares, you can see it's going more under under the soil and uh, and the whole water um, um, has a nevo is, is, is pulling up. What we also did is that we on the top of the hills, we plant trees because the idea is that we pull, how do you say, I don't know the English word for that, but we, 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 we hire up uh, um, uh, 
pulling the water more to the t to to the top of the of the hills, and uh, and um, that because there was the soil very degraded after uh, twenty years or thirty years of uh, communist uh, economical system. Um, here you see how we did it. So we dig out the deeper part of the of the lake and um, make a, 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 let's say a small um, grabbing with 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 a, um, a digging machine and putting the loam parts into that dam, and we built we stuck the water and the lowest part of the of the of the landscape, and the water start growing. So it was incredible, a lot of work. We did it all ourselves with our own digging machines and own people. And you see here on the next picture, you see that the, the lakes was growing very slowly. Some lakes takes a half a year, some lakes take a year, and some lakes takes two years to get full. But after that period, they stay full and create microclimate into the landscape. You see here. So that was the plan. It is about a hectare, 2,000 hectare farm. So we have a few hedges. We have fields about 300 hectares big. So the wind was blowing over it. So we say at the beginning, the starting point, we start to, to plant each 40 hectare uh, a hedge, hedges and, uh, and look in all the, 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 the deeper places, how we can create a lake or how we can let, create a water landscaping so that the natural um, uh, water cycles start flowing again. And it was also like that, that little rivers um, come back. So some lakes going flow down a little bit and the other lake going up. So the system start to flow again. And that makes, of course, that nature come back. So we have incredible lot of nature and incredible lot of biodiversity created on that, let's say, dead farmland. And uh, what I also think is that for the bio organic agriculture, the biodiversity is very important because we have a lot of insects and microbes. We need to, to uh, grow our crops in a natural way. And when they all are um, um, gone, we will have a problem in the future with pests and with other illnesses in our crops. So we will not harvest good food. Um, that was all the building we built. We built it all ourselves with our own people. So we also um, employed about 200 people out of the villages of, um, of, of Poland. And what you see in all the pictures that when you're bringing together what belongs together, you create a lot of beauty and happiness. And on that beauty and that happiness, you can you will get a healthy economy, what really bases on cost. So what I think is the problem what we have now in the in the moment what we what we see in the world is that um, the most of the companies are not accountable for the for the activities they did. So they don't pay their own cost, and that's also the problem what we talked before that the farmers pay a big bill at the moment because the climate crisis um, uh, 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 will uh, work out in big risk for the farmers. And the other side, we have to restore the land because the land is destroyed about industrial agriculture. And we have to produce food for many, many people in this world. And um, what I forgot to say, because we talk about ruminants also a bit in this conference, conference today that we need ruminants to bring in the, the biodiversity into the soil to bring in the um, microbes into the soil and that's about 20 percent of our um, food system so our food should be not more as 20 percent of um, um, uh, protein and fat out of uh, um, animals and milk um, and when we feed ourselves like that and we feed the earth like that, earth will be healthy and we will be healthy. So the whole discussion about no meat in your meal, I think we should discuss it at least because we have a lot of grassland and we need the cow or the ruminants to 
build and hold our social, source utility. Here you see a few pictures of our cows and our landscape. And in that landscape, of course, it was the beginning of the farm. And this all looks the farm after 12 years. So another farm would I make the last four years, I was working there as a consultant and I helped them to go organic. That's in Wendland. And uh, there have been a lot of problems of drying out the landscape. So you see here the oaks are drying. They are about 250 years old and they are dying. The farms are ir irrigating a lot of water on the land. And um, here they make the same wor work to be done. So we really try to cover our fields uh, year round and uh, composting a lot of local stuff we have ourselves with a lot of wood inside so that we have a lot of um, um how do you say um, um roots in the um, in the soil so a lot of um, mycelium into the soil and was quite successful in growing our crops of course it's a completely other starting point the soil was not so so de degraded like in uh, Yuhova in Poland and we also tried to find new solutions, new methods to grow our crops with less water, less irrigation and more soil fertility end of the end of the year. So you see here our potato growing quite well under uh, uh, um, and how do you say a covering um, with clover grasses. Here also we make um, um, and concept for circa 5,000 hectares of water landscaping uh, together with the um, Biosphere Reservoir, that's a nature conservation um, um, organization of the state in Germany. And now we're working on that concept together with the locals, together with the farmers and together with uh, the officials to show if we can create a water landscape. So. Uh, where we need last less irrigation for the farm, for the farmers, and be more sustained and more resilient for the future problems. Because in that farm in Wendland, we get last summer since May about maybe 100 uh, millimeter of water in the whole summertime. So it was completely dry. We have a temperature about 42 degrees, uh, 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 at least for one and a half weeks. So I think we have some solutions, how we can do it, how we can help Earth to get health again, how we can help to um, get the economical life for an organic farm. And um, what we need is of course, is a lot of hope and um, not fair. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Sebastian. Yeah, I found it really interesting that you were saying in the discussion we had that uh, those 20% uh, of the countryside or of the arable land uh, that you gave back to nature uh, was was kind of worthwhile because you had more production than on the 80%. Yeah, at least, yeah. We have more production, for, especially it was more stable production, maybe not the highest, yeah, but we have each year in dry years or in wet years, we have a better production than the neighbors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that I think that you can buffer water into the landscape and you can um, cooling down the landscape with your water systems. I think that's very important to have a, a yield what, what, what each year is somehow economic. Mm. Yeah, because I, I said this because you were saying more beauty and 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 happiness, uh, um, but it's always the question that we had it in the in the discussion uh, before as well. It's 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 often an economic um, factor or, or pressure. Uh, so so how can we convert landscapes into more resilient and and uh, um, uh, fruitful landscapes? It it should it should count at the end as well, although not. Yeah. Perhaps not in the current system, but if already it's worthwhile in the current system, partially at least, it's a good argument, but then we need to change the system in the next step anyways. 
Yeah, I think I think one tool you could use for that, what I think it is really have a good future, is the, the true cost. So we should really count the true cost of a product product production system. And uh, when you count a good holistic organic farm, then you will see that he have a lot of more produce only than the potato. So the climate uh, protecting the biodiversity, the social aspects. They all covered and they are all common goods. And when you see a conventional farm, an industrial conventional farm, I think you should make a difference on that. They don't pay their own cost. So the costs are coming in on the society and now we are paying the bill in, in, in the climate crisis. And also we are as organic farmer are paying the bills of the neighbor. So I think we have to, we have to count um, in another way. Mm.